Hello and welcome to The Insider. I'm Lisa Adams. Welcome to our viewers and to our listeners on the radio as well. In the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, lots of things are still moving forward in our community, including major projects at the historic Warner Theater and significant upgrades at UPMC Park. Here to talk about all of that is my guest today, Casey Wells, Executive Director of the Convention Center Authority. Welcome, Casey. Glad to be here. So although the pandemic slowed work on both the Warner Project and the UPMC Park Project briefly, they really got right back in action. But we're going to start with the Warner today. This is a massive project planned for years to make the 1930s theater function in the way that Erie Events has been using it for years. So remind us why this was really needed. Well, the Warner Theater was built and opened in 1931 to accommodate the new phenomenon at the time, talking pictures. And of course, uh, you know, film didn't require much of dressing rooms or backstage support space. Um, additionally, the Warner back in 1931 did its first vaudeville show. So consequently, uh, um, there was not the backstage amenities necessary to accommodate today's touring productions. Of course, if you were a vaudeville uh, entertainer, you would arrive by train, have a briefcase in hand, come in and have this very small dressing room. Um, do your, do your act and jump back on the train and go to the next uh, city on the, on the uh, vaudeville circuit. But of course, today's uh, touring productions uh, may have 20 tractor trailers, uh, 10 tour buses, and uh, it was, uh, uh, we need to expand the depth of the stage, the width of the stage, uh, and all of the uh, other amenities necessary to accommodate these very large touring productions. And uh, this uh, will accomplish that, essentially making a 1931 movie house into a, two, a true uh, 21st century performing arts center. Yeah, that's something we know is important for the Erie Philharmonic Orchestra, too, because the Warner has become their home. So I know these changes are not just about adding space, but really doing things technically for sound and so forth, too. But let's talk about the progress as we've seen the back of the Warner come off and really open things up to the public about what's going on there. We have some pictures of the progress of all of this. So as we look at those, how does it feel to see this progress? And was it a little scary taking down that back wall? I mean, when you're dealing with old architecture, anything can happen, right? Indeed. Um, we began working on the Warner restoration and expansion back in the mid 90s. Uh, and it's been a long time coming. Uh, this is the final phase of a four phase uh, restoration and expansion effort. Um, and yes, it is a bit scary taking that back wall down, but again, we had great engineers, great architectural team, and great contact contractors ensuring that uh, every uh, step was very slow and deliberative, and uh, so far, so good. But, you know, you see the stage shell being expanded. It will include new rigging, new lights, new sound, uh, a tremendous amount of dressing rooms, wig rooms, wardrobe rooms, laundry rooms. And again, all of those backstage amenities necessary to accommodate the needs of touring uh, entertainers. Additionally, just to talk about the Philharmonic for a minute, we'll, we'll actually be able to get a uh, orchestra shell, which is part of our project brought in, and uh, it will uh, be appropriately sized and uh, uh, aesthetically and acoustically tuned to the theater um, for our orchestra in our theater. And uh, I offer that the, the Philharmonic will never sound better once we get, uh, we get this uh, project accomplished. Yeah, we are looking forward to it. Of course, the construction, which we thought would work around the orchestra schedule, ended up needing to really go straight through for costs. So we thought we would have the orchestra in uh, the Erie Insurance Arena. But because of COVID, that never really happened. No, we uh, made those preparations. We recognized that the Philharmonic could not lose a season. Um, so we uh, made the uh, accommodations to provide uh, a curtaining system to cut down the, the size of the arena, play just to the West End Bowl to make it a theatrical type setting. We, we made that capital investment and although we weren't able to use it because of COVID, it will be able to be redeployed for other events moving forward that need uh, uh, somewhere between three and 4,000 seats. Of course, the, the theater seats 2,300, the arena 9,000. So we'll be able to move this curtaining and draping system to uh, size the arena to best fit the needs of that particular uh, actor show. Yes, and maybe even some Philharmonic events there before the Warner is ready to reopen. So we saw, we saw the foundation there, we saw the pilings. I mean, you're really building a brand new building there 
and you're also going to have the ability for these trucks to pull up and unload when you have these big stage shows? Yes, we're going to have loading docks for the first time. I think people that uh, frequent the downtown area on show days see all of the uh, trucks and all of the uh, equipment being uh, unloaded on the street, onto the sidewalk. Obviously, it's been a real challenge for our stage hands for a number of years working through inclement weather, uh, but the show did always go on. Uh, this will provide two, um, two bays for uh, indoor uh, uh, truck loading and unloading, uh, as well as uh, all of those other pieces of equipment necessary to, again, uh, accommodate these huge sets and huge uh, production components. I, um, folks may have never known it, but before we were typically unable to fit some of the scenery and props onto the stage of the Warner Theater because it was so small and so shallow in depth. Um, and we would just leave those components on the truck. Of course, the audience really never knew what they never saw, but there are and always were elements that we were unable to provide as part of a production. And fortunately, with this uh, stage expansion and renovation, um, Erie will see the entire show with the entire set pieces, and uh, 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 we're looking forward to that happening. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about the work that is still underway. we got a little bit of video this week. We'll show you that. We're also going to talk about what the Warner will look like when it's all finished and how they're protecting the inside of the Warner while the work goes on outside. All that's coming up when we come back. I'm Lisa Adams. Welcome back to The Insider. My guest again is Casey Wells, Executive Director of the Erie County Convention Center Authority. We're talking about the Warner Theater Renovation Project, and we'll talk about UPMC Park 2 in just a little bit. So, Casey, what did you have to do to protect the beautiful interior of the Warner Theater while all this chaos is going out on the outside? Well, we basically built a wall that covered the entire proscenium opening uh, 70 feet wide by 70 feet high, uh, insulated that wall basically to protect the interior of the auditorium, uh, grand lobby and foyer spaces from the elements. Of course, we uh, pulled out all of the heating and ventilating equipment as part of the restoration. So we brought in temporary heat and actually are pushing that warm air through the existing plenum and uh, uh, air distribution center throughout the theater to maintain a temperature of about 55 degrees. Uh, that's necessary to protect all of the plaster and all of the other decorative elements that are inside the space. Uh, and uh, it's worked very, very well. Uh, there's also a metal uh, shield out there, if you will, that is protecting uh, um, the fire curtain and that wall that I just mentioned was built uh, from any debris uh, that may have been uh, dropped during um, the, um, the demolition process. So, so far so good. Um, the theater is maintaining temperature, the, the, the temporary heat's working well, and uh, uh, fortunately the weather hasn't been terribly cold uh, or terribly snowy, which helps us uh, maintain our schedule on the project. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about that. We did check in on the Warner project this week. I got a little video that we can take a look at now. It was a little bit snowy that day. So talk to us about what we're seeing here, because this is what we're looking at right now in the project. What's, what's still, what are they working on now? What still needs to be done? Well, um, the, what it was just on there was a, a metal uh, wall, if you will, that was hanging from the top, again, protecting the, uh, the interior space on the wall that we'll build, we built there. You see it there, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the new uh, foundation being put in, an orchestra pit. Uh, there's forms relative to the walls. Uh, and, uh, um, and trap spaces. Uh, this Warner stage will have true traps in it where we can pull out sections of the middle of the stage to allow the phantom to disappear, to allow the tire and cats to come up out of nowhere uh, and employ all those theatrical elements that are part and essential parts of Broadway productions. Uh, those elements that we were unable to provide before in a 1931 movie house. Uh, a lot of backstage support space. Uh, we'll have rooms for the conductor, road manager, uh, promoters, uh, event producers, uh, uh, different sizes of dressing rooms for star dressing rooms, uh, quads, doubles, uh, chorus rooms. Uh, we will be having spaces for, um, for the uh, musicians, ladies, and uh, uh, men's uh, locker rooms for the Philharmonic, uh, as well as a musician's lounge. 
uh, a lot of the amenities necessary to take care of those artists and uh, uh, actors and musicians who are, who are gracing our theater. I mean, our Philharmonic and touring Broadway shows have been, um, have been using dressing rooms that are uh, barely civilized. Uh, you know, we keep them clean, but you know, they're 95 years old. And uh, this will uh, provide for uh, much upgraded uh, amenities. Um, we'll have connectivity relative to be able to monitor stage activity, uh, both from a video and audio standpoint from their dressing rooms. Uh, there's a lot of details of elements uh, that are incorporated in this project that will make it a true uh, 21st century performing arts center and I'll offer will be uh, paralleled or equal to uh, any, uh, any theater anywhere in the country. This is uh, being designed by a national theater architect, uh, Dan Coffey and Associates, who did the Chicago Theater, the Oriental, the Palace. So we went to somebody that had great theatrical uh, renovation experience and it's certainly paying dividends now. Uh, as the uh, design moves from paper uh, to, uh, to brick and mortar. Yeah, let's talk about that uh, design firm. We do have a, a little flyby animation that they provided of what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So as we take a look at this, which we can see very modern, but again, maintaining the character inside the theater, um, are you able to be on schedule? When, when will this be completed and people be able to go inside the new space? We plan on being uh, completed about Thanksgiving of this year. Um, again, projects like this are very complicated when you're looking at a 90 plus year old structure and integrating a new uh, facility into it. You've got to be care very careful, as I mentioned before, very deliberative. Um, you know, we, don't, we want to preserve all of the historic elements relative to the original theater uh, to the extent possible and uh, are working with Preservation Erie and uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Historic and Museum Commission who are providing us uh, guidance uh, and help. Um, but it is, uh, it is in, in, by, by definition, um, it's no longer a 1931 movie house. That doesn't meet our needs. Movies are struggling and we, we need to uh, incorporate some new uh, elements into uh, our theater to preserve it, to pay homage to, uh, to the past and its history. But uh, the best way we believe to do that is to continue to program activities, to expand programming so uh, future generations can enjoy uh, uh, what is necessary to host in that theater for it to be sustainable over time and to continue to uh, meet the needs of, of our community for, uh, for the next century. Well, I know when the funding finally came through to get this project started, you were having to maybe sideline a couple of the elements of this, including the marquee. But we're going to talk about that marquee, where it is now, what's going on with that, and if you're able to do everything that you wanted to do in this project. And that's what we'll talk about when we come back. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to The Insider. I'm Lisa Adams, and we're talking with Casey Wells, Executive Director of the Erie County Convention Center Authority about the Warner Theater renovation and big upgrades at UPMC Park. So the marquee of the Warner, a really iconic part of the theater, is gone right now, taken down at the end of 2020. If people drive by on State Street, they probably thought, what the heck is going on here? Um, so tell us about this. Um, this was among some of those elements that you thought you might not be able to fund, but you have the funding for restoring this right now? Yes, we uh, were recipients of very generous donations from um, local philanthropists, and we were able to uh, incorporate the uh, uh, restoration and renovation and replication of the, of the, uh, the Warner Marquee. Yeah, so we're looking at it here. It's just, it's gone. We have a little drone video. So. Uh, people, you know, love things like this about Erie. It really is a landmark, and it looks a little bit naked without it. So talk about that, because even though people love this, it really hasn't been able to light up for years, right? It's been decades since it was able to operate. Um, it had deteriorated over time. Again, it was exposed to the elements for over 90 years. Um, but we were fortunate to be able to have some of the original film that was taking uh, on or about opening night uh, 1931. So we know exactly how it operated originally. 
um, the sequencing of the Warner Flash, W-A-R-N-E-R, Warner, Warner, Warner Flash, and then there'd be a sunburst and curtaining and uh, really cool effects that, uh, that were uh, uh, part of the uh, 1931 operation. So we're not only going to replicate the, uh, the, the marquee itself, but we're going to program it to operate as it did in 1931. Um, some components, uh, as many as possible, we are going to take off of the original marquee and add them and make them part of the, uh, the new marquee, uh, including the Tiffany glass on the corners as well as some other decorative metals. Um, but the, the condition of the marquee itself, as one could imagine, has deteriorated significantly. Uh, in fact, um, much of it was shoveled out in rust. Uh, when it came down uh, and uh, what we did was we took the marquee, they uh, took uh, it to a shop in, uh, in Minnesota, uh, Pablaki Signs, that uh, got the, won the contract to restore the, the uh, theater marquee uh, and they will take it back, assess it, uh, carefully do a forensic study of it um, and replicate it exactly uh, what was originally there while incorporating the uh, as many original elements of that marquee uh, as part of the new one. It'll include the milk glass, uh, the, 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 the reader board out front with the metal uh, hanging letters on rails, uh, as well as uh, the Tiffany glass that I mentioned. Yeah, it's a tricky thing when you're talking with, you know, history purists who don't want to see something replicated. I think we all remember the Chautauqua Institution debate about the amphitheater. But in this case, as you said, I mean, it's crumbling. You can't preserve it. So you're trying to preserve pieces of it within, within the new one and make it look just like it did. Well, you know, we, we have about a million and a half program for the Warner Marquee. And, you know, sometimes practicality collides with, uh, with um, preservation. Uh, and uh, I think we're getting the best of both worlds. Um, because, uh, you know, we, we don't want to put a 90-year-old piece of metal back up uh, and tying in with brand new metal. Uh, but, uh, you know, the balance is, uh, is somewhere in between. Um, but again, the mission is to keep all of the original elements that uh, we can. Um, but clearly some things are going to be uh, different. Uh, LED lights as opposed to incandescent bulbs, uh, not only from an energy conservation standpoint, but you just can't even buy the bulbs. Um, that were part of the original program. So um, it's practicality versus uh, uh, budget and uh, of course, um, you know, trying to preserve all of the elements as possible. All right, so just very, very quickly, there's a couple of other components we saw in that flyby that you don't have funding for yet, including that big screen outside. Yeah, the video board is uh, uh, something that we'd like to have, but it, again, it isn't anything that's necessary right now. Those things that we cannot afford currently in the budget, which are what I call ornaments that can be added to the tree over time. Uh, we're not going to not do anything that is, um, is part of the infrastructure. We're going to prepare to have all of those elements at some point in the future, probably, uh, hopefully quickly, but um, we're working toward it and uh, we're excited that the, the theater will be, uh, uh, meet the needs of our community and we'll add those uh, elements uh, as, uh, as we can moving forward. All right, for baseball fans, when we come back, the changes at UPMC Park, and we'll talk about when it will open. Stay with us. I'm Lisa Adams. Welcome back again to The Insider. We've been talking with Casey Wells, Executive Director of the Erie County Convention Center Authority, about some big improvements for Erie sports and entertainment venues. So the changes to UPMC Park, I understand the work is finished there. We got a little bit of video this week. How important is this to integrating the ballpark with, with Erie Insurance Arena and really keeping baseball here? Well, it was critical to keep baseball here. Uh, this investment was necessary uh, to meet uh, the new professional baseball agreement standards um, and also to provide other revenue opportunities for our team ownership to, uh, to be sustainable and uh, have it be a uh, financially, vi financially viable uh, enterprise in our community. Um, the, uh, the, the project enabled us to incorporate elements that previously were thought and budgeted to be in the arena renovation that happened in 2013. 
um, but unfortunately we were unable to do it at that time. So we're able to integrate this new building into the arena on one side to accommodate the Uri Otters, a team store, and the Uri Otters offices, uh, and then on the ground floor uh, to integrate it into the ballpark with the new Seawolves team offices and Seawolves team yeah, store. We're seeing the new entrance there, it looks just terrific, even though there's snow instead of green grass. So this really, it, again, if people drive on French Street, they've seen the transformation. It really is aesthetically pleasing how it is connecting those two venues. Well, it's a very much more welcoming uh, entrance experience uh, before if you came in off the 10th Street. And that, that uh, entrance will still remain uh, operational. But if you come in off 9th Street, you don't walk in behind bleachers. Uh, immediately, you, upon entrance, can see the, the entire field the park uh, much more welcoming and uh, it centralizes uh, the location of, uh, of a 2002 master plan that uh, identified uh, this area and this development as a, a potential for a, a downtown cultural, cultural sports and entertainment district and uh, fortunately this project in the completion of the Warner Theater uh, enables us to, uh, to achieve that goal. So we can take a look at the UPMC Park website, part of Erie Events website here, and look at these improvements. Major League Baseball, of course, has announced that it is starting its season. There's a date for that. Uh, we are curious now about when UPMC Park will be able to open. You know, on this website, we see some of the additional spaces here, the clubhouse, you know, different unique seating. Uh, also some other venues for having parties and again things that had evolved for the ballpark but you really didn't have in the original designs. Uh, that's correct. It, it really made it from a single A short season ballpark to a double A uh, facility uh, that's uh, comparable if not nicer than other double A ballparks uh, in the country and this reinvestment uh, you know uh, enabled us to get the commitment from the Detroit Tigers and Major League Baseball to keep double A baseball in, in Erie and uh, we're, we're just thrilled that that's the case and we can hardly wait for uh, people to be able to come and see it and enjoy it. So what do you know about that date-wise? date, date -wise? What are the rumblings and what are you hoping for? Well, um, we don't have a schedule yet. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's likely that the season will start a little later than normal. Typically, it starts at the beginning of April. We believe that'll be delayed a bit to, to, to what degree. We're not certain yet, but um, we're, we will be ready when uh, when they say play ball in the 2021 season, and I'm confident uh, a community will be out to support us and uh, cheer on the Erie Seawolves. Uh, you talked about the team stores being a part of this as something that's more friendly to people visiting, but also office space for the people who work for both the hockey team and the baseball team. I mean, those things are much improved under this as well. Uh, correct. You know, we want to be able to uh, attract and retain the best and the brightest relative to our team managements. And uh, this gives them an environment conducive to their success. Uh, again, that's all part of uh, the, 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 the business of baseball and the business of hockey. And uh, we have to uh, position them for success. Well, certainly this must be an exciting uh, moment in your career. You've been involved with this for years now, but we in the community are all looking forward to seeing the new ballpark open and seeing the Warner Theater open. Welcome back the orchestra and other touring shows. So best wishes as the project uh, goes on, and thanks so much for spending some time with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. And always thank you for joining us as well. If you have an idea you'd like us to explore on the Insider, just email me at l.adams at wicu12.com and join us again next time for the Insider.